So for this dimension of comparison, we analyzed freedom of expression with academic freedom. Uh, for this presentation and the report, expression and speech are used interchangeably, but we will refer to expression more often as it is the legalized right here in Canada. So for our analysis, we looked at two aspects. The first is the mention of freedom of expression in academic freedom policies. This aspect was divided into two categories, implicit mention and explicit mention. All institutions had an implicit mention to some degree. Um, this meant that academic freedom policies contained the right to disseminate without interference in the academic setting. Some institutions, as you can see in the graph on the right, about 30%, um, had academic freedom policies that explicitly use the terms expression or speech. An example is shown in the McGill Statement of, on Academic Freedom. With explicit mention brings an issue of conflation. If freedom of expression is included under academic freedom and not distinguished as discussed in the next, two as next aspect, it can be difficult to separate these two freedoms. So for the second aspect, we analyze the actual separation of freedom of expression from academic freedom. Separation was divided into three categories, no distinction, limitation stated, and clear distinction between the concepts. No distinction meant there was no reference to either policy. This was usually found from institutions without distinct freedom of expression policies. Limitation stated meant that institutions had freedom of expression policies. And in that policy, there was a statement that said that this policy was not intended to amend or qualify existing academic freedom policies. For clear distinction, this was when institutions actually defined and stated the difference between academic freedom and freedom of expression. This was seen in only two institutions in the West, Mount Royal University and UBC. As you can see, this distinction was rare despite the continuing confusion between these two freedoms. It's important to note the necessity of this distinction as it helps inform institutional response when these freedoms clash. I will pass it on to Alan who will discuss more about this with the following case study. Thanks, Crystal. So a case study of how a university attempted to define the line between academic freedom and freedom of expression is shown here with the events in September of 2020 at the University of Ottawa. The background is a professor at the University of Ottawa used a racial slur in the context of explaining the reclamation of such slurs by certain groups. And following a student's complaint, said professor was suspended. Following the suspension, 400 professors from Quebec signed a petition opposing the move from University of Ottawa, titling the petition, University of Ottawa Bans Award. In response, the university created a committee with the explicit goal to clearly define academic freedom and freedom of expression. The committee was created in consultation with the university. The president of the University of Ottawa asked a retired justice, the Honorable Michelle Bastarach, to chair a committee on academic freedom. The committee chaired by the Honorable Michelle Bastarach was also consisted of five University of Ottawa professors. And one finding was that the freedom of expression and academic freedom had to be defended, but not at the expense of marginalized peoples. Next slide, please. More findings included the concession that there is no straightforward solution to resolving the dilemma the university faced. Each case must be analyzed within its context. However, the report when attempting to define the line between academic freedom and freedom of expression actually did not take an authoritative stance and did not list how the university itself defined this delineation between the two concepts. Instead, it cited other cases, professors and faculty members, and their respective views on academic freedom and freedom of expression. But the strongest attempt to define the parameters of academic freedom was when the report cited Professor Craig Forsess deferring to the university's Canada's definition, saying academic freedom must be based on, quote, reasoned discourse, rigorous extensive research and scholarship and peer review and applicable standards. In his view, academic freedom ends at private activity and freedom of expression rights would then step in and protect speech. 